Hi there, my name is Gene from CypherTech, and today I want to go to part two of our partner review, talking a little bit more about Sophos switches, and we're going to focus today on the interface and what it looks like in Sophos Central, and then we're going to hop into the switch itself and just kind of do a quick overview of what the inside of the switch looks like. Now, there are a lot of settings inside of the switch, so we're not going to be able to go to each and every setting inside of the switch. So I just wanted to take a few minutes here to kind of go over some of the basics. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. Right off of the bat, if you go into Sofa Central, you'll see in the overview, there's a new section here that says switches. Go ahead and click on switches, and you will see that there's a section here to add a site and there's a section to add a switch. So I've already added in a site, but to add a site, just click on add site, put in your name, put in your location description, and that adds in the site. And then under there, you go ahead and you add your switch. Now to add a switch, click on add switches. Now you need to do this. I just discovered before you plug in the switch. So, You've got a sticker here that has the, uh, the the serial number on it. Go ahead and type that serial number in and click on register and click on where you want it to go to. That's going to make the switch appear here and it's going to go uh, to a synchronizing state where you're, it's waiting for it to check in. Once it checks in, it's going to see that the version of the firmware is not up to date. So it's going to do a firmware update for you automatically. And then it's gonna start populating all of this information. Um, when I did it, it, took about 10 to 15 minutes from the time I powered it on to the time it all came up, so be patient. Once you have the device in, you can see it gives you the IP address of the device, and you can use that uh, to go ahead and hook it up inside of a browser, open up a separate tab, and get into the device. The password for the device comes on a a separate sticker. Now, once it's synchronized, you can click on it and let's take a look at what it looks like inside of Sofo Central. So in Sofo Central, you've got your main dashboard that gives you some vital statistics about the switch itself, including each port and whether or not it's linked and what the speed of that link and whether or not it's using power over ethernet or not. And that's here. So for example, port number nine is currently using 2.1 watts of power. It's a PoE uh, device, and it gives you a little bit of statistics about it. It also tells you whether or not something is an uplink port over to another device. Now, interestingly enough, port number 48 is our uplink port to our Sophos XG firewall. So it went ahead and showed us that. Now, Sofo Central right now is mostly read-only. It's giving us a lot of detail, but I've been speaking to my friends over at Sophos and they assure me that this is really just the very, very beginning stages of what we can see out of Sofo Central in the very short term. So I'm expecting that this review is gonna get out of date really, really quickly. So that being said though, what you can do now, other than read only, is you can take and program some VLANs in here. So you'll notice we've got a lab VLAN. We can click on add VLAN. You can click on port settings and you can label each port and you can kind of do some basics with updating. Um, and once you take and do some of those basic updates, it puts things in sort of a task queue and when you save it, it pushes those down to the switch. You also have under diagnostics, just a whole list of little diagnostic things that you can do, including some cable diagnostics some event logging. Um, you know, all in all, again, this is the first round of what you can do with the switches and my initial impression as a partner is it's really cool. Right, I like what they're doing here. I can definitely see the big picture as far as what they want to do, as far as bringing in more and more compatibility from Sofo Central and pushing down out of Sofo Central into your switches all your configs so that you know if you've got a very large you know environment of a lot of different switches, you can take and you can you can do that here. 
So that's what it looks like from the SOFO central side. Now, let's take a look at what does it look like inside of the switch itself. So I went ahead and I pulled it up here. Let's go ahead and put in our username and password. Now, right off of the bat, the switch has, from what I can tell, three main areas. You've got a monitoring area that shows you a dashboard, um, some real-time meters, statistics. Um, then you have a configuration section. I want to show you guys that. So all of the things in configuration, including your standard system configs, which are going to include things like your IP address, um, your ARP table settings, where it pulls at system time. You've got a section for simple network management protocol. So if you want to monitor this using a tool like Ovic, for example, you can use that. There's your SNMP settings. Your next section here is your port settings. And of course, some of the highlights of port settings in my view are port isolation, which is really handy for you know, making sure you get good security. Uh, jumbo frames are available here. There's a section here for power supply. From my understanding, the power supply section is so that you can modify the total power budget. You also have PoE Keep Alive here as well. Certain devices uh, need that in order to run properly. The VLAN settings is where we can control and add in our VLANs. Spanning tree, of course, is here. So it supports STP and RSTP, along with SYST, MST, and uh, MST port settings are here. Your link aggregation section is here. Your L3 protocols are here. This does support L3 static routing. Uh, LBD is here. So that's your uh, loop back detection. Your QoS or quality of service is included with this and that includes uh, bandwidth control and storm control. There's a section for access control, which I'm not 100% sure about everything that access control can do yet, uh, but I'm very interested in, in delving more into that later. The firmware section is here. So this switch does support dual firmwares. So if you have a firmware revision that goes uh, sideways, you can take and you can reverse that back to a previous firmware. And something I found that was very interesting is in SOFO Central, if you click on your firmware here, you do have the ability to schedule when you can take and when you can have them go back. So for example, click on your version here, click on schedule swap firmware, and you can schedule it to roll back if you had a bad firmware update. I always thought that was kind of cool. Now I just went ahead and I ran a synchronization because I did add a, uh, a VLAN here and I was seeing that that VLAN, this VLAN number three, which is my IOT, wasn't showing up inside of SoCal Central. So I assume I need to take and, and run a, uh, a synchronize on that. And we'll give that a few minutes. That task in queue is here. Moving down, we also have analyze. So these are your logs, diagnostic tools, uh, including a cable test. So for example, port number 48, click on test. And it gives you some, basically some guesswork here. You got your ping test, IPv6 test, trace route is all there. There's a section here for people, so you can add in different administrators to who wants to have, or excuse me, who should have access to admin this switch. Taking a look at some of the privileges, it looks like you've got basically an admin level and a user level. I would assume that the admin level, you can make changes. The user level is probably going to be more of a read-only kind of thing. And then uh, there's a whole section here for security, including you know guest VLANs, uh, port settings, 
uh, access security, whether or not you'll be able to access this through the web or whether or not you're going to be command line only. This does support a fairly robust command line interface and we'll do a, a separate video on CLI. Um, it supports Telnet and SSH. Port security is here. I'm not entirely sure what this section uh, really can do other than it looks like you can modify or edit the number of MAC addresses that you can have per port. So I, I guess that's really important if you don't want to take and have like a switch on top of a switch, right? And not have like a whole bunch of MAC addresses coming in. You want to keep this dedicated to one, you know, one particular port. Uh, Radius server uh, compatibility is there. And then of course uh, you have the ability to put on um, denial of service attack prevention. So those are sort of the basics. My impression of it, I, you know, for a first round, first draft, I'm pretty impressed. I think that this really hits on all of the things that I'm looking for as a network administrator for an SMB, uh, maybe even mid-size uh, level access switch. I I'm wondering, I, I don't know, um, whether or not this is white labeled from someone else, it kind of feels like, I don't really know whether or not this was programmed from the ground up or whether or not they, they bought another company. I, I really need to get a lot more information, I think, from Sophos about what the history of this switch is. I'm very uh, interested to know that because I, I like to kind of get an idea. It's, it's very hard right now to know what the reliability of these switches are gonna be. Obviously, we want a really good liability, uh, excuse me, a, a really good reliable switch. And so knowing sort of the background on that, I think is going to help. So I'm going to have some conversations with some of the product developers. They have reached out to me. Sophos has asked me whether or not I want to have some meetings with some of the product dev team. And I've told them I'm more than happy to sit down and talk with them. So knowing that if anyone out there has any questions that you have for the product dev team that you want me to ask on your behalf, by all means, please let me know here and I will make sure that those questions get answered. So, well, that's it, I think, for now for sort of a general run through of the current version of the interface. Uh, please like and subscribe and I will make sure to make more videos and I will make sure to make some videos that are really targeted about maybe some of the things that you saw here that you want to see more in depth of. Uh, let me know and I'll make sure to make those videos for you guys. Thank you very much. Have a great one.